Well, hello and welcome to Everything You've Learned About Dating and Relationships is Wrong. My name is Jonathan Asley and I'm a personal development coach specializing in dating and relationships for folks in midlife. And midlife is after baby making years and before retirement. So if you're 42 to 69, you're in the right place. So our topic today, why selfish women are seen as sexy and attractive to men. So I'm gonna put on my glasses to read something for y'all. Y'all, what am I, from the South? Oftentimes I see posts from people who have been in relationships that just ended and they go on and on about how they were wronged in the guise of seeking help or advice. In many cases, they are validated and seen as victims, which perpetuates victim consciousness. Then they seek advice on how to avoid this occurrence so they can draw in and attract a healthy partner going forward. So let's explore the secret weapon for sexiness and attraction because it's time to get selfish and it's not what you think. So, okay, I'm turning, pick up my glasses. So I know many of you have seen posts from people posting about a relationship that ended or maybe they're doing it in a private group or they're doing it publicly and they go on and on how they were wronged by the other person. And then in there, they're kind of subtly saying, well, how can I avoid this for the future? And I see this all the time. And I want to just point this out for a moment because this is absolute victim consciousness. The minute you point the finger at someone else, you have to look at those three fingers pointing back at you. And, and in many cases, the reason why this is victim consciousness is because all of their friends come in and start support them and validate them. And you poor thing and we feel so bad for you and so forth and so on which isn't, it's, it's not healthy or sexy behavior. So I wanna draw this to your attention. I know many of you have seen this and there's probably many of you who have even done this. And I can tell you, I've done it myself a few times. I've acted like a victim, like I was the one wronged, okay? And it took me a long time to figure out this secret weapon that I'm about to share with you and why this relates to selfishness. Okay, because selfish is an attractive trait. And, and I want to share with you why. Because this selfish behavior is choosing self-love. That's right. The minute a relationship ends with another person and they choose to go down a different path, it is time to nurture yourself to be selfish and nurture yourself with self-love. Now, self-love can take on many forms. It might be doing exercise. It might be doing meditation. It might be doing yoga. It might be spending time with family. It might be time spending with friends. There's a variety. Of, and, and one of the healthiest ways is to begin doing some personal growth work and doing a deep dive into what caused it, what you can. And another deeper dive is to ask yourself, what did you learn from this past relationship? And, and when I say learn, what you learned about yourself from a positive perspective, that's another form of self-love. And if you want to take a deeper dive into self-love, it's saying, what were the good parts of this past relationship? And what did I learn from this past relationship? And here's the thing. If you're still connected with this old partner, when you choose a path of self-love, meaning you're not giving any more energy or attention to this previous relationship, and you're going to put all of that attention to yourself and your own heart and nurturing your soul and what makes you feel good, guess what? You become magnetically attractive to that other person and to everyone around you. In fact, I'm here to say that one of the blessings of an ending of the relationship is that you get that opportunity to do a deep dive into self-love and then you become this magnetic attractor to everyone else around you. And certainly this past relationship that you might have been. And then when you're so rooted in your sovereignty, when you're so rooted in your power, you really ask yourself, would I even want this person back in my life? Because here's the thing about self-love. Self-love doesn't need a relationship for that individual to be happy. Codependent behavior needs that. 
Um, people that lack their own self-worth need that. People that don't love themselves need that. But to that person that has filled their love cup up, meaning I don't need a relationship to be happy, I don't need you, this other person, for my happiness. You are not responsible for my happiness. That is a fucking sexy and attractive trait. And while I titled this for men, this could be for both men and women. Let me reframe that. Since my audience is women and this has been titled, you know, how to attract men, this can be used for both men and women. And I know this sounds simple and sure, it's easier said than done. And the reason why, that's why it's called a practice. You know, someone can't hand you a guitar and say, play, unless you're, you know, a servant or something like that. You're going to have to do the keys and the notes and, or excuse me, the, you know, the frets and all that kind of stuff. You're going to have to learn just like a piano. You're going to have to learn. And it's the same with self-love. It's, and if you need help, Google the darn thing, type in right now, what is self-love and start reading about it. Reading all the different articles that are out there on how, and it's really about nurturing that own, that little kid inside of you that is already this beautiful jewel this beautiful creature of love anyway when you nurture that inside of you and start peeling the layers that have been coated and cracked in the mask that we put on all these years and start peeling away your natural self-love will begin to exude we've had layers and layers and i'm i'm saying we i'm gonna i'm gonna generalize here because i see it so many people are wearing masks and layers that cover up that beautiful creature inside of all of us and we're all interconnected so if you felt wronged in a relationship when you can go so deep into your own self-love that you can love that other person doesn't mean you have to be in relationship with them but you can just love them as a human being and accept them for their faults if you will or their imperfections or whatever word you want to use and we're all human beings so we're all imperfect then you're stepping into another layer of self-love, which is so damn sexy and attractive. And when you start exuding this, you become a magnetic attractor for what you want. I know the title was a little tricky, selfish. There's nothing selfish about nurturing your love cup. There is nothing selfish in the negative sense. It is the absolute purest sense of the most important thing that I recommend every individual take on in their life is to nurture their own love cup. And if the word is selfish, then so be it. Because that person that has a love cup overflowing, and you all heard this, or most of you have, how can you love another if it's not coming from the love you have inside of you. And for many, it feels depleted. So the minute you post something, how you are wronged by another human being, you are giving them your power. You are giving them your love cup. And I'm here to say to you, bring your love cup back and take it on and pour it yourself. Don't give that to anyone else. All right. Let's get a conversation going. There's places you can post right here. Type in what your thoughts are. And if you disagree with me, whatever, let's get a conversation going. If you find value in what I share, please go to my website, jonathanasley.com, A-S-L-A-Y. Google me. Join my group, Midlife Love Mastery. I shoot three of these videos a week. We have interactions on a daily basis. I'm practically addicted to the darn thing. So if you want to spend more time with me, go to my private group. We have a private Facebook page. We can interact. And if you want to talk to me personally, then reach out. Let's schedule a call. Let's see if private coaching is right for you. I just went to a housewarming party for one of my clients. I went to a wedding for another client a few weeks back. People have worked with me, have seen major transformation in their life. And usually it's just a little tweak that makes all the difference. So send me a message. Let's get on the calendar and let's talk. As always, I hope you found value in this video, and I'm going to send you off with a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug, wishing you a super-duper wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now.